up to this point, we've done several examples of subnetting Class C networks, and hopefully you've got a good handle on that now. In this lecture, we're going to take it on a stage by subnetting larger networks. So we're going to look at subnetting our Class A and our Class B networks. So let's say for our first example that we've been allocated a Class B, the IP address is 135.15.0.0 slash 16. That's our network address. And if we subnet that into slash 29 subnets, we're going to have three bits for host addressing because we've got 32 bits in the address. 32 minus 29 gives us our three bits. And that will allow us six hosts per network because two to the power of three is 248 minus our two gives us six hosts. So a slash 29, that's going to give us six available hosts per network whether we're using a class A, B, or, or C. It's going to be the same for all of them. Here, because we were allocated a class B slash 16 range, we're going to have 13 bits for the network address. If it was a class C, we would only have five bits for the network address because it's 24 to 29, a difference of five, that would give us five bits. With a class B, we've got those extra eight bits, so five plus eight gives us the 13 bits. And that is going to allow a total of 8,192 subnets. Let's count that up as well. So two to the power of 13, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1,024, 2,048, 4,096, and finally 13, 8,192. For the IP address 135.15.10.138 slash 29, what would be the network address, the broadcast address, and the range of valid IP addresses? Okay, you, you know the drill by now. Please pause the video, figure that out, and we'll come back with the answer. Okay, here's the, the answer. So the question was IP address was 135.15.10.138 slash 29. What's the network address, the broadcast address, and the range of valid IP addresses? We'll write this out the same way as usual. So we write out the IP address and the subnet mask. We put the line in after the slash 29, and the line is going in after the 8. You can see here, if you look up in the top right, that we've got 1s under the 128 and the 8. So we add those two together. 128 plus 8 is 136. So the network address must be 135.15.10.136. The line is after the 8, so we add 8 to 136. The next network address would be 135.15.10.144. And if the next network address is 144, then the broadcast address must be 135.15.10.143. And the valid addresses for our hosts fall between the network address and the broadcast address. So that's 135.15.10.137 up to 142. Okay, another popular way of calculating the, the network address, the broadcast address, and the host addresses is by using the magic number method. You'll see this being cited in quite a few places on the internet. This one is very handy if you've been given the subnet mask in dotted decimal notation rather than with a slash. In that case, you can usually figure it out in your head. So a slash 29, if we wrote that out in dotted decimal notation, it's 255.255.255.248. And what you do with the magic number is you take the, the value in the octet that is being subnetted, so 248 in this case, you take that away from 256. So 256 minus 248 gives you 8, and you know that the network addresses are going to go up in blocks of 8. In our example, our address was 135.15.10.138. So we find which block of 8 is closest to that. So 10 times 8 is 80, 
another five times eight would be 40, add the 80 and the 40 together, that gives us 120. The difference between 120 and 138 is 18. So two times eight is 16 would give us 136. That's the closest value we get here. So the network address must be 136. And then we add the eight to the 136 to get the 144 again. And we know that that is the next address block. Okay, so that's the, the magic number method. With the magic number method, just whatever the subnet mask is, you subtract that from 256, and that gives you your address blocks. It's pretty similar to the way that I was doing it previously. The way I normally do it is the octet that is being subnetted on, I'll write that out. So I'll write out 128, 64, 32, 16, and so on. And then I will figure out what the bit pattern is, and then I can put the line in, and I can see where the address block is at. But play around with this a bit, find, try out the different methods of doing it and figure out which one you're most comfortable with. And that's one you, that you can use in practice and the one that you're going to use on exam day. Okay, let's move on to another example. So this example now we'll do a class A where we're going to subnet on the fourth octet. Previous example we just did was a class B on the fourth octet. This is going to be a class A on the fourth octet. And here we've been allocated 60.0.0.0 slash 8. Same first question again. If we apply the subnet mask 255.255.255.24a, so it's the same style of question but a different mask here, how many subnets do we have and how many hosts per network? So as usual, stop the video and I'll see you back in a second to give you the answer. Okay, so this example here, you see the other examples, we've been given the subnet mask as a slash notation. On the exam, maybe you'll be given it as a slash notation, maybe you'll be given it in dotted decimal. Here we were given it in dotted decimal, and we can figure out that 255.255.255.24a, that is the same as a subnet mask of slash 28. If you're not sure on it, you can just write it down. The more practice you get with these, so you'll get really fast at doing it. Like if you look at the, the last octet there, 128 plus 64 is 192, plus 32 is 224, plus 16 is 248, plus 8 is 248, plus 4 is 252, plus 2 is 254, and plus 1 is 255. And you see I was able to do that without even thinking about it. Once you've practiced this a little bit, you'll be doing exactly the same thing. So for our example, we had a slash 28, we put the line in and we can see that we've got four bits for our host addressing. So that's 24816 minus two gives us 14 hosts per network. And now because we were allocated a class A slash eight, we're gonna have 20 bits for the network addresses because the difference between the default slash eight and the slash 28 that we're using is 20 bits. So two to the power of 20 works out at a little over 1 million subnets. Now, hopefully you wouldn't have to figure out a number as big as that on the exam, but if you had to, you'd still be able to do it. Again, you just start at two and just keep doubling up all the way until you've done it 20 times. As usual, we've got part two of the question. So for the IP address 60.15.10.75 slash 28, what is the network address, the broadcast address, and the range of valid IP addresses? Pause the video and I'll see you back here with the answer. Okay, for this example, the line is after the 16 when we draw it out. So the network address is going to go up in multiples of 16. I can see by looking at the last octet of the address that I've got a 1 under the 64 and lat that's all. So the network address is going to be 68.15.10.64. And if I add 16 to that, the next network address will be 68.15.10.80. So our broadcast address here must be 68.15.10.79. And the range of valid host addresses fall between the network address and the broadcast address. So that's 68.15.10.65 up to 78. 
Another way you can do it is by using the magic number. And this is a way you can do it quite quickly in your head, especially if you were given the subnet mask in dotted decimal notation rather than in slash notation. But even if you have been given it in slash notation, you can still do it this way. You'll just need to convert it to dotted decimal first. So our example was a slash 28. And a slash 28, the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.240. We can figure that out by adding up the numbers. So a slash 28 is going to use the first four bits in the last octet. So four bits is going to be 128 plus 64 is 192 plus 32 is 224 plus 16 is going to be 248. Then what we do with the magic number is we take that number away from 256. So if the number we're subnetting it at is 240, then 240 taken away from 256 is going to be 16. So we know that the address blocks go up in multiples of 16. And with our example, it's asked us to figure out the network address for 60.15.10.75. So we just go up in multiples of 16 until we get to the closest subnet. So that would be 16, then 32. We can double that to 64. The next one would be 80. So 75 is between 64 and 80. So the network address must be 60.15.10.64. We know that the next block starts at 80, so the broadcast address must be 79, and the valid hosts would be 65 to 78. Let's do another example. So the previous example was a class A on the fourth octet. This time we're going to do a class A on the third octet, and this one can get a little bit confusing, so you might need to pay attention to this one again. So in our example, we've been allocated a class A, 60.0.0.0 slash 8. If we subnet it into slash 19 networks, how many subnets do we have and how many hosts per subnet? So pause the video again and figure out the answer and I'll see you back here with the answer. Okay, uh, slash 19 is, the line is going to be after three bits on the third octet. So that leaves us 13 bits for hosts. Eight in the last octet, and then five on the right-hand side of the third octet. So to figure out how many hosts each network is going to support, it's two to the power of 13 minus two. So that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1028, then 2048, 4096, and 8192 minus the 2 gives us 8,190 hosts per network. And because we were allocated a class A slash 8 range, the difference between a slash 8 and a slash 19 is going to be 11 bits. So, so to figure out how many networks we have, it's 2 to the power of 11. So we already know 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. So we'll double that again. That gives us 2048 subnets. As usual, we've got the second part of the question. So for the IP address 60.15.10.75 slash 19, What's the network address, the broadcast address, and the range of valid IP addresses? Please pause the video as usual, and I'll see you back with the answer. Okay, this example we are subnetting on the third octet. The other examples we've been subnetting on the fourth octet. The line is after the 32 on the third octet. So the network block addresses are still going to go up in multiples of 32, but it's just it's going to be on the third octet rather than the fourth octet now. So our network address is 60.15.0.0. You can see it if you write out the whole um, IP address. Also, we're at 60.15.10. We're going up in multiples of 32. So obviously, 10 is less than 32. So the network address must be 60.15.0.0. The next network address would be 60.15.32.0. So the broadcast address is going to be one less than that on the third octet and 255 on the fourth octet. So the broadcast address is 60.15.31.255. 
and the valid host addresses will be between the networking address and the broadcast address. So that's 60.15.0.1 up to 60.15.31.254. Okay, so the value on the fourth octet is the lower range is going to be a 1, the higher range is going to be the 254 for the hosts. The, the subnetting is done on the third octet if the subnet mask is anything between a 16 and a 24. We can use the magic number method for that example again. It was a slash 19, so slash 19, that's three bits on the third octet. So that is 128, 192, and then 224. We subtract 224 from 256, which gives us 32, so that we know that the address block is going up in values of 32. Again, it's on the third octet rather than the fourth octet here. So we can figure out the same as we did in the previous slide from that, that it must be a network address of 60.15.0.0 because our value in the third octet is 10. The broadcast address, one less than that, 60.15.31.255. Valid host, 60.15.0.1 up to 60.15.31.254. Okay, review this example again if you're not sure about doing it on the third octet. Remember, we, we figure it out exactly the same way as we did when we were doing it on the fourth octet. So the address block is figured out exactly the same way again. You just need to remember that on the fourth octet, your hosts are going to go from 1 on the low end up to 254 on the high end. Okay, let's do one more example. So you've been asked to subnet the 134.65.0.0 network into six different networks. What subnet mask are you going to use? Please pause the video and figure out the answer. Okay, before I show you the answer in the next slide, let's see how we would figure this out. The network is 134.65.0.0, so we know it's a class B network and we need to split it into six networks, so we're going to need three bits because it's two, four, eight. The, it's a class B, so the default subnet mask is a slash 16. We need six networks, which was three bits, so we add three to the slash 16, and that will give us a slash 19. So very easy to figure this one out. And that's showing it there with the line on our diagram as well. Some extra information that we weren't actually asked for in the question. A slash 19 in dot a decimal is 255.255.224.0. The network addresses would be going up in blocks of 32. So 134.65.0.0. The next one, 134.65.32.0, etc. And we would have 8,190 hosts in each subnet because we've got 13 bits available for the host address. 2 to the power of 13 minus 2 is 8190. Okay, so that's just done for all of the different examples of subnetting. Hopefully you're confident with this now. You should be. If you've worked through all of those examples, then you're going to be fine when you do the exam. When you are on the exam, there's lots of different ways that they can ask you questions about subnetting, but it's all going to boil down to just a few things which you can see here. So it could be a variation of given a network requirement of X amount of subnets and Y amount of hosts per subnet, what network address and subnet mask should you be using for each subnet? The other basic question they can ask is if they give you a particular IP address and subnet mask, calculate that subnet's network address, the broadcast address, and the range of valid host IP addresses. So again, it could be any variation on those questions. They may ask it in a different way, but as long as you can answer those questions, which you can now because we've done loads of practice examples of them, you're going to be fine for anything that they throw at you on the exam. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400 page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.